Hello, we have two diagrams here. The diagram on the left is one that was made by saxophone player John Coltrane. And I have put in a red boundary these numbers towards the center. And what these numbers are is simply seven at the top and then counting down to one and then counting up again. And it's symmetrical. So he's starts with seven at the top and then counts down on both sides. So going to the right, what we have is seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You get to one and you count up, two, three, four, five. Simultaneously, instead of putting seven at the top, you can put one at the top and count up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then he stops at seven, but presumably you would then Continue back down, six, five, four, three, two, one. So you either put seven at the top or one at the top, and they are inverses of each other. So these two numbers always add up to eight. One plus seven, two plus six, three plus five, four plus four, and so on. So he's put this here. Why did he put that there? What was he thinking about? I think it's pretty obvious that those seven numbers are the seven notes of the scale. So what Coltrane noticed is that if you remove the half steps and you just take the seven major notes, the seven basic notes of the scale, and you count either up or down, doesn't matter, we'll, we'll count down. If we start with seven, we go to one and we count up, we have 12 notes. So I have this in a slide here. These big letters at the bottom are the notes that are equivalent to the numbers that Coltrane has put in there. So if you're in the key of C, you go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and instead of hitting the C, which would be the octave of C, you just play the seven notes and then play them back down again. So you're just playing the white keys on the uh, piano up to B and then back down. And a very nice thing that happens is you end up with 12 notes. You can count them and you'll see that there are 12 notes here and after D you get to C and, and this pattern repeats again. So Coltrane has found a nice simple clever way to put just the major notes in a sequence of 12. So what he has done is he has proposed in this diagram that each one of these lines, he's got 60 lines coming out of the center, each of these lines is simultaneously a half step and a basic major scale. So in the outside, he's got C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. He's got every half step in the Western musical scale. And simultaneously, he puts just the major notes in the Western scale going down and then back up again. One nice thing about going up and down like this is that you get a, a rhythmic flow. So the notes are not going infinitely higher and higher and higher. You're going up. It's like it's like a sine wave or, or mountains and valleys, you know, going up and down and up and down. And then when you get back to the beginning, it could just continue with with going up and down. So you could think of this as a circle that goes on forever. Whereas with the half notes uh, in the outside, it keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up, covering five octaves. And then I guess you either visualize this stopping at the top after five octaves or just spiraling, spiraling around infinitely to infinitely high notes. Anyway, Coltrane has put these major notes on the inside and there's something very fascinating about this which is that there's a symmetry of course because he's put seven at the top counted down in both directions so surrounding the seven you have sixes and then the fives and then the fours obviously because he's put seven at the top and he counts down to the left and he counts down to the right you know you have to wonder how he's coming up with these ideas what where he's trying to go with this. Uh, there's some evidence that Coltrane did not invent all of these ideas. Whoever it was, 
whatever they're playing around with, he's obviously experimenting with it. What is he thinking about? I'm not sure, but an interesting thing is that in the diagram on the right, which is called a Paisano period, Fibonacci numbers in a modulus function, which some astrologers have speculated is a basis for the zodiac, which I know immediately sounds crazy. You know, a lot of people don't believe in astrology and that Fibonacci numbers would create a zodiac. It sounds like all kinds of woo-woo, crazy, nutty things. Um, but this is what Coltrane did. He thought about these nutty things. He, he thought there was this, a music of the spheres. He tried to work it out. He was trying to make his music reflect the music of the spheres. This is well documented. There isn't any doubt about this. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm just tracking what he's doing and then relating it to this Paisano period diagram on the right, which came out very recently, only in the last few years, without knowing about Coltrane's work. So independently coming up with diagrams that look remarkably similar. And in the diagram on the right, there are these symmetries around the top numbers. We have zero at the top, and then ones to the right and left. Um, and then it goes nine and one, which is not obviously a symmetry, uh, but what happens is it adds up to 10, which this is a modulus 10 function. So we get one matches one, nine and one equals 10, two matches two, seven plus three equals 10, five matches five, two plus eight equals 10, and this is in base 10, so it's the base number um, which makes that number 10 more interesting. So my point is this. On the left, we have Coltrane working with this image of a music of the spheres. On the right, we have astrologers working with Paisano periods, trying to work out a music of the spheres as well. That's a basis for astrology. And they both have the same symmetry. So going back to my uh, PowerPoint slide here, uh, the next slide is the third paragraph. Did Coltrane and the others who were working on these ideas, uh, friends and colleagues of Coltrane, did they know about the relationship of this diagram to Paisano periods? Because it's remarkably similar. It even has the emphasis on symmetries. Um, is this why Coltrane built the symmetries? Or was it just an intuition? Fourth paragraph, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. It's fascinating that Coltrane was working with ideas that astrologers decades later began working on, and these astrologers did not know about Coltrane's work in this area. And again, let me bring your attention to the first paragraph that I have here on this slide, um, that Coltrane studied physics, philosophy, and esoteric and controversial topics like astrology in his search for a music of the spheres. So I've made an, another video that introduces this basic information. And in this video, I'm adding this additional information about these symmetries that are in uh, Coltrane's diagram that are also in the Paisano periods. And this is very controversial and, you know, I'm sure I'll continue to get very heated uh, exchanges and arguments where, you know, people just feel like Coltrane is crazy and I'm crazy for even, even bothering to think about these things. But if nothing else, we are getting some insights into the thinking of John Coltrane, one of the great musical geniuses of modern times, and we're learning a lot about Paisano periods and what happens when you put them in circles and the various patterns and symmetries uh, that occur. So, you know, at least that much, I think everybody could agree, has some usefulness because understanding number theory eventually usually leads to some practical applications somewhere along the line. Okay, so I just wanted to share with you that when I made that video on John Coltrane's diagram of the music of the spheres, I mentioned it, I don't know what these numbers are in the middle. Well, I looked at them again and saw, oh, that's what they are. So I thought I'd just make this little video to make it clear that that's what they are. I think it's pretty 
straightforward, um, hypothesizing, but it, it looks pretty clear to me. Um, and it continues to have these very close relationships to the diagram on the right, the Paisano periods, which astrologers developed independently of knowing about Coltrane's work, which looks extremely similar. Okay, that's it, my friends. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.